At this point, I'll call the regularly scheduled meeting of the Hudson Common Council to order for Monday, uh, February 21st, 2014. If you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, the roll, please. Mayor Birchall. Here. District 1, Morissette. Here. District 2, Yaku. Here. District 3, McCormick. Here. District 4, Weber. Here. District 5, Hoggett. Here. District 6, Banslow is excused. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak to the uh, council on any item that is not on the agenda? Now is your time. One more time. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak to the uh, council? Okay. I just I just had the agenda uploaded, so we're ready to go now. Okay, um, Madam Clerk, consent agenda. To approve the regular Common Council meeting minutes of April seventh, two thousand fourteen, and the organizational meeting minutes of April fifteenth, two thousand fourteen. To approve claims for payment in the amount of $731,159.13. A detailed description is available in the clerk's office on request and is posted on the city's website. To approve the issuance of 16 regular operators licenses for the period April 22, 2014 to June 30, 2015. And to approve the issuance of two regular operators licenses for the period July 1, 2014 to June 30, 2016. And to approve the issuance of two temporary operators licenses to be used April 26, 2014 at the Pottery for Prevention event at the Phipps Center for the Arts. Additional operator license information is available in the clerk's office on request and issuance is contingent, contingent upon payment of any outstanding debt owed to the city. To place on file the financial report for March 2014, the, uh, the Public Utility Commission minutes of April 8, 2014 and the quarterly reports from the building inspector and the fire department. To approve the Yellowstone Trail Heritage Days on June 7th through 8th, 2014, and the St. Croix River Days on July 12th through 17th, 2014 as community events. To approve the temporary Class B wine and Class B beer licenses for Turning Point for the Pottery for Prevention event on April 25th through 26, 2014 to approve the bowling alley license for the Hudson Bowling Center for 16 alleys for the license period July 1, 2014 through June 30, 2015. To approve changing the time on the no parking signs on 5th Street next to Trinity Academy to no parking from 12.45 p.m. to 3.45 p.m. To approve the Willow River Schools Willow Walks event on June 12, 2014 at 9 a.m. as presented. To approve installing three direction arrow signs to direct traffic through the curve on the corner of Vine Street and 12th Street. To approve the Stipe Shows Incorporated to hold a carnival at the Plaza 94 parking lot contingent on written receipt from the property owner and obtaining a direct seller's permit. To approve barricading Locust Street between 2nd Street and 3rd Street on the third Sunday in May, July, August, and September 2014 and June 22, 2014 for the Locust Street Car Show contingent upon any, contingent on approval from the city attorney regarding any liability issues. And that is all. Move for approval. Second. Roll call. Yakub? Yes. McCormick? Approve. Hoggett? Yes. Weber? Yes. Morissette? Yes. Okay. Next item on the agenda is discussion possible action for a conditional use permit by Presbyterian Homes, Housing and Assisted Living for a senior community-based residential located south of Stage Line Road and east of the Hudson Hospital, Clinics and Health Partners Medical Office Building. Mr. Darnold. Good evening. Good evening. Planning Commission recommends approval of the conditional use permit uh, for Presbyterian Homes for the 65 unit community based residential facility 46 units will be for assisted living and 19 units for memory care and a residential care apartment complex uh, 95 units with 132 beds uh, the 
conditions of approval recommended by the Planning Commission are that the issuance and maintenance of the Department of Health Services licenses for both the residential care facility and uh, the residential care apartment complex and the uh, community-based residential facility be obtained and maintained and that a uh, copy be provided to uh, the Community Development Office for filing and approval of the final development plans for the proposed community-based <coughs> residential facility and the residential care apartment complex and a 6,000 square foot medical office. So uh, looks like the, the Planning Commission will be reviewing uh, those final development plans either in late April or, or excuse me, um, uh, possibly in mid-May. Are there any questions? Our representatives of uh, Presbyterian Homes here tonight, if you want to ask of any questions. <coughs> Anyone have any questions? Yeah, I was wondering about how well that's going to work to share the driveway with the hospital, with the roundabout. Well, your car counts really aren't as substantial as what you think. There's, uh, based on uh, ITE engineering, um, generations for traffic, uh, 200 bed facility, uh, basically on a daily basis. Those average about 2.6 trips per bed or 532. Uh, 40 employees, uh, typically the, the employees generate about 3.93 trips per day and ends up being 689 trips per day, spread out over 12 hours, that's about one car per minute. It's pretty light traffic. Yeah, okay. I mean, the only chance for bottleneck is turning left and to, to go over to the, the new facility right after the roundabout, but you can always change it, I suppose. Any other questions or comments? We have representatives here if you have it, if anyone would like to see anything or um, other than if you want the full color deal, we can have the, Mr. Howard can give us a uh, presentation if you'd like to see it. It's entirely up to them. I'd like to follow up on that comment about the uh, roundabout is that so much traffic turns in there that it would seem like a, de a designated right turn lane would have been useful there. I don't know if we can do that now with the design, but uh, half the traffic that goes through that roundabout turns more or less and it would make it make it go much more smoothly for the people going through and they do move through there. We've talked about that, haven't we? Haven't we? Planning Commission, we were discussing it, yep. yes. Same thing. Well, I think there are two suggestions, if, if I may yes. speak, I think yes. there's two suggestions that we need to look at in regards to uh, modifications of that roundabout. One is uh, the, there's two lanes approaching that roundabout of which uh, there's signage that the lane narrows down mm -hmm. to one. That right lane should be painted so that it's very clear that, that you have to get over in the left lane as you approach. I think there's some confusion from that. Again, th those lanes need to be painted and that could be put on the schedule. Also, some of the roundabout signage that uh, is provided uh, actually shows the actual, uh, you know, there's a roundabout, but then there might be um, a bar that goes to the right or south. That type of signage might also clarify uh, or we can put something, but I, I certainly think that there are uh, mod uh, relatively inexpensive modifications to help that traffic pattern. Okay. That'll all still be discussed at Planning Commission before. Well, I, I think Planning Commission said that they really want to separate the two issues. Right. That, yep. But. Any other comments, questions? And there's a motion to approve it, right? Correct. Yep. I'll move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next is discussion possible action of development plans for 360 foot square foot addition modification to off street parking and add nine parking stalls at 2323 Crest Crestview Drive, Taco Bell Border Foods, Inc. Yeah, in late uh, 2012, there's discussions about uh, development of the former tourism center. At that time, there were some discussions about uh, property trades uh, between the ex existing Taco Bell site and the Hudson uh, Center proposal. Um, 
those have been uh, basically approved and are moving ahead. Uh, the proposal for the uh, development plans for the Taco Bell site is, is that they enlarge a the building by 360 square feet on the north. Uh, they'll be rearranging their existing parking in the drive through uh, which will clean up uh, the traffic patterns in sight. There'll be a second access provided off Badger Drive to the north. Um, uh, originally, when we talked about Gateway Boulevard and trying to clean up some of the traffic patterns there, we talked about a median being installed uh, in Gateway Boulevard. This particular plan will accommodate that, which will allow full access off of Badger Drive, the right in, right out only on the existing driveway access as it is now, if that median would be installed. So they are looking ahead at that possibility. Uh, Planning Commission recommends that the proposed development plans for the Taco Bell site at 2323 Crestview Drive with the plans to be amended per the City Engineer's review dated April 8th. Those uh, basic plan changes are uh, talk about specifications as it refer to city specifications and then there's a storm drainage uh, modification that is now being agreed upon between uh, the owners of uh, the property and the Hudson Center, so that issue's been resolved. We just need to get the plans changed before the building permits issued. Questions for Mr. Darnold? I'll move for approval. Is there a second? No, second. Discussion? No, I just want to say one thing quickly. I, I know the rep our representatives here from Taco Bell, and I, I, as a member of Plan Commission and as someone who that area was part of my district before the before, got re or, uh, before the census, I want to thank you for t taking into consideration changing the entrances and trying to help us as a city make that area more uh, e flow more easily. I think that's being a good neighbor, and I really appreciate it. So, okay. Any other comments, questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Fifth, uh, 5C is discussion, possible action on wireless communication antenna and auxiliary equipment on 509 Second Street, Verizon Wireless. 509 Second Street is the second building on the northwest quadrant of Second Street and Walnut, so basically one block west of the City Hall and up one building. The proposal by Verizon Wireless is to install four antenna on the east side of the building at which those antenna will be screened uh, with a material that looks like brick so it will help complement or look similar to the existing building. The antenna, the two antenna on the west side uh, will be painted the same color as the brick so it will help camouflage those, not that they're going to disappear, but you know, they'll be less noticeable, similar to what we do with water towers, painting them blue to help uh, them to blend into the natural environment. Uh, state uh, legislature uh, changed um, review uh, the way cities and municipalities can review wireless communication facilities in 2013. Basically, uh, uh, cities cannot stop uh, these types of reviews as long as the antenna that are being placed on an existing building or exist existing support structure does not change the height by more than 20 feet or if the, any uh, basic tower structures are less than 200 feet. Um, again, the nice thing about this particular proposal is, is that the equipment building, ancillary equipment building will be placed inside the building and the wires that go from there to the antenna will be uh, taken through the building so they're not on the side of the building and they're not exposing. Uh, so I think they've proposed a very nice job in, in at least concealing uh, the antenna as best possible. And the other issue is, is almost everybody has a cell phone. It's pretty hard not to try to accommodate these types of facilities in areas where reception may not be as good. Uh, Planning Commission recommends approval of the development plans as proposed by Verizon Wireless for the six antenna and the ancillary equipment at 509 Second Street. Anybody have any questions on this? Uh, no, I'll move to approve. I'll second. I uh, just, uh, just regress a second. Uh, the antenna on the east side of the building next to Second Street will be about seven and a half feet higher than the existing wall, parapet wall, but again, it'll be screened on three sides. The antenna on the west side will go ab above this current roof about eight feet. So it's not, it's not like they have a significant 
height about the roof line. Okay. Any other qu or any questions or comments? We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Finance Committee, discussion and possible action on purchase of controller boxes for 2nd second, oh, second Street, 2nd and Walnut, and 2nd and Vine. Uh, we, we, uh, these, uh, we went out and received bids. Tom is here if we have questions. Uh, it was recommended from Finance to uh, go ahead and purchase this at a cost of $16,000. And Tom has assured us it'll be less than $9,000 because we've allocated $25,000 for this particular project. Questions or comments? Mr. Zuli, do you want to come up if, if anybody has? We've got two more items for you, or three. Move for approval. Okay, is there a second? Second. Anyone have any questions for Mr. Zuli? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next is possible discussion for a purchase of a trash containers on Dyke Road. This is a, to purchase five uh, containers for $3,048. We have 19883 in our park dedication funds, and finance has recommended approval for this. <clears throat> Questions or comments? Are we planning to have recycling as part of that, or is this just straight trash removal at this point? Uh, these were not designated as recycling containers, although that uh, these were just trash containers. Uh, we certainly could um, try to incorporate the recycling containers uh, in other locations. I mean, clearly a lot of stuff gets thrown away that shouldn't, uh, that could easily get recycled out there. And people would use it, I'm sure, because they were kind of used to it now, so. So what does it cost more to do uh, <coughs> recycling containers or would it be similar costs? Generally, they're just different colors or they have, you know, have a different uh, hood that says, you know, blue recycling or something to so that effect. Maybe could we put like two recycling and three garbage? Possibly, if we're doing, we approve five cans, make two of them recycling, and three of them garbage. Good idea. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Is that a motion? Yeah, I'll make that motion. I'll sure. second it. Any other discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, item 6C, discussion, possible action on 2014 Grandview Park concessions agreement. I think uh, it was delayed. Are we? We we made a no. motion to con contingent upon seeing last, uh, year. last year's finance uh, receipts or tax return. Okay, I, I yeah, it was not delayed. I'm sorry, I was thinking of something else. So this was part of the five-year plan, is that correct? The concessions agreement. Yeah. Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm thinking about the next item. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. You're jumping ahead. <laughs> I'm jumping ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> sorry. It's basically, that we. May I? Sorry. Go ahead. Basically, uh, uh, in the contract, they need to show us receipts, and mm -hmm. we haven't seen any. So before we approve the next contract, we want to see the receipts from last year or a tax return or something that shows that what their actual income or what gross receipts. Gross receipts. Thank you. Was. Randy. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I'll make that motion. Do we have to read? Okay. I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay. Yeah. Discussion. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> all right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> now number six. <laughs> Discussion, possible action on uh, purchase of shade st uh, structure for Williams Park. This was postponed. Yeah. This was pulled. <laughs> postponed. 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 For postponed. So we'll bring it back. Okay. <laughs> So we don't even get to talk about it. Awesome. <laughs> Dang it. Okay, let's move on to the next item, item 10, which is the draft RFP. initial draft of uh, engineering uh, RFP for our engineering services. I presented a copy for everyone. Basically, I just wanted everybody to get a chance to see it and to start getting feedback. Um, Danny and I, Danny's provided feedback, Catherine has, Tom and I have talked about it. We just wanted to make sure you had a chance in the early stages if there's things that you want to see in it. So no real action tonight, just so that it's 
been presented to you. And if you have comments, you can either make them now or you can email them to us. It's going to be a little bit before we get RFP, it. RFP, RFQ, well, what's the difference? One's for originally, it was, I don't know, Catherine, is there really a difference? You, well, you had request mentioned something. for proposal. They're proposing to provide XYZ services at X amount. Qualifications that's just described. That's originally there. what I had had, but then Neil thought it maybe should be an RFQ for qualifications. It doesn't matter to me. I, <laughs> I think it's, it's been an RFQ. They're in the going past. to tell you're asking for their qualifications, but you also want yeah. a proposal from so them. So it'll be an RFP. Okay. But otherwise, just get any comments, you know, in the next couple of weeks to, to me, and then we'll incorporate those in with what Danny and I and Tom and Catherine are working on. Unless there's something you have questions on tonight, but. Okay. And the items that are highlighted in pink are things that at some point we'll need a decision on from the council as far as, you know, certain questions that you will need to make policy decisions on. So if you want to kind of look at those and in your review so that's it so the last page Devin yep it, you have that highlighted and I guess it's pink right will the engineer engineering be involved in the review inspection of developer funded projects that's, that's right old. now and this is something that Neil brought up yep if because I think both works with some of the developers that are developing in the city and then as they do their inspections we then rebuild them out correct Neil? yes whether we want to continue to do that i can't are they done more so for private they're done for private you know a lot of the red cedar came in any most of the there, right could i just why wouldn't we i guess is is a question that i would yeah, uh, okay. the same thing danny do you yeah. want to address that that was the question that i had well, at this point, I mean, my own personal yeah. uh, emphasis has been tried to, between what's being proposed between the part-time city engineer yep. and what's being proposed between a consulting engineer to give city staff as much latitude as the, that part-time engineer evolves, gives us discretion to, to direct projects to the best resource we think can handle the job. Now, sometimes that may be discussing a project with the Tom Sifko, our, our engineer. Tom, do you feel comfortable? Do you have the capabilities of handling this size of project? Now, as far as the um, as far as um, inspections, the, the same discretion would be used. The size of the project, type of inspection, it may be required. We may sometimes forward that to. Mr. Sifko, other times we may forward it to the consulting engineer. I see a period of approximately six months upon which is part-time engineer prior employment going to change. We're going to be able to evaluate it over a period of time. We know we're not going to be able to streamline it, but I want to try to get as much flexibility of getting those projects in the best hands we possibly can. Now, the objective is with Mr. Sifko that with less overhead costs, the cost to the city or to a developer is going to be less, but that may not always coincide with the capabilities of, of his particular experience. I, I, I don't think this says that it says, will the engineering firm be involved in the review be billed? And I, I think we want to do that. Yeah. Neil, do you want to, you're the one that. Am, I, am I misunderstanding this? I probably am. But I, I, whether it's, whether it's uh, Tom or them, we would expect that we would bill that, wouldn't we? Or don't, wouldn't we oh, bill yeah, that? Yeah, the question and is, we'll bill as many sure. project costs as we possibly can. That's okay. been the yep. policy and, forever. Yep. That's and my, my point in adding it there is that it was not included within the, you know, within the scope of services to be provided. <clears throat> you know, if you read the other, you know, project management slash construction services, okay. that, you know, that was not in there. Okay. And okay. I didn't know whether that was intentional or not. And so if it is, if it's the intention, you know, some language similar to that should be added. At least oh, that was my it, recommendation. This wasn't, this wasn't your that, question? That was not in there at all, oh, okay. which okay. is why now I offered I that comment. <laughs> I wasn't sure whether it was intentionally not in there or. Well, I think we should have it in there. Yes. It was not in there the last time. Okay. Yeah, with the language, like it just as needed, right? right? right. Because it wouldn't be all the time. No. When necessary or appropriate. Can, and yeah. that would be up to the right. city staff to determine. And I, I think that's, that's exactly what we were been talking about right. with that. Danny, so cool. okay, thank you. 
Any other comments or questions? Now that I have asked confusing no. questions. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently there's a word missing, engineering firm or engineer. I'm not sure how to read that. Where is that? At the, in that pink comment that we were just or discussing. The engineering Will the engineering or, Oh, yeah, well, the firm engineering or? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Entity. Good catch. Okay, anything else on that? All right, let's move on to 10B. We've got a lot of items. Well, we're moving. We're getting near the end. Um, I, I think everyone last uh, organizational meeting received a copy of the, uh, the uh, downtown parking study. And uh, one of the things that um, this council, I think, is probably uh, something that we need to, to get moving and, and decide what we want to do with our downtown parking, whether or not we do anything. But I think it's one of the, it behooves us to sit down and review this, this uh, parking uh, consultant's uh, report that he gave to us. Um, and I, I thought I would, I would re request uh, how you wanna go about this, whether we have a separate committee, we work as a whole, we work on it as a whole uh, council, or we go to a, a you will call it a parking uh, committee for a period of time. To, to make recommendations back to the council. It's entirely up to you folks, however you'd like to run it or do it. I think if we put it back in committee, it just takes longer. I mean, okay. I don't know if we have enough time allotted for all of us to make those decisions. Uh, but if the alternative, if you're asking to go yes. to a different committee, I would say let Mary and her people that she's been working with follow this through. Okay. All right, I, I was thinking of, uh, um, again, okay, I, that's a good suggestion. And, and my point is not to, I don't want to slow this down. We need to, like you said, well, we make action or not. Yeah, you know, we've, it's a fairly, uh, and there's other alternatives that, that, that we're looking at. And I think we've had, uh, I've had a couple different people bring me some new ideas that we hadn't looked at before and uh, something that we should, we need to address the issue, and, and I don't want to say put it to bed, but this goes. This has been going on for at least 25 years. <laughs> and yeah, and we have a serious parking shortage. I mean, at a certain time that, of the day. But I think we've progressed more in the last yep. few years than yeah. we have in the 25 years. Yep. Well, right, and there's more demand for parking too. Right. So yep. I mean, we. So I, I um, you know, the the only not to say that I disagree with that, Randy, but I think who is on your committee? Uh, Mary, did you did you use it through? Was it the? Uh, well, we had the parking. We did it with. Um, we had the parking downtown parking committee down with the chamber, and then the parking study was essentially you and myself and Tom and Marty. Yep. And with the state, I mean, with not with the state. That's the other committee with with the. The 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 Walker consultants. Well, Walker consultants. But so, I think a lot of it derived from the downtown parking. Correct. And Danny uh, had a lot of good input into that. Yeah. So how about, how about this? I'll, I'll suggest this. How about we have the chairman of the safety and public works and maybe John. Sure, I'd be I'd Because, be and then Denny and, and maybe myself kind of do that, unless you want to try and do it as the council. That leaves the two new guys off. That's not very good, is it? That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> that was no. That wasn't the intent. But John, it's John's uh, district. District. Yeah. Right. And uh, I think maybe Tom, Mr. Tom Zuli too, since yeah, all the well, I, I, needs to be. you know, as as uh, I would guess that council people would be the voting members, and everybody else will be, you know, yeah. staff is, staff assistants. Make sure that you notice. Let me know when the meeting is going to be, just so I can notice. Yeah. Notice the Greendale, it. Yeah. The Greendale notice. But. We let's get a consensus whether that seems okay or not. That's fine. What's the timeline? Oh man, <laughs> I think we want to try and move as quickly as we can uh, to make a to make a recommendation. Um, and I think I think the uh, is more than just the parking ramp. I think it's uh, we've got some other issues. How's yeah. it get paid for? How do we pay mm -hmm. for it? I mean, this is a that alone could be a finance nightmare trying to figure it's not a nightmare well, who's going to pay for it if we get ahead of budget cycle and you know yep. have a recommendation by august kind of thing then yep. we're in, we're ready we could plan for 2015 at least have something to look yep. forward to there's always an option of referendum too that's true 
It's not, it's not your favorite, but it's an option. Well, no, but, you know, the issue that we've, we've talked about, and since it's on the agenda, we can talk about whether or not, as a percentage-wise, that the downtown folks pay for a certain percentage of it through uh, taxes, or we charge, and then the rest of the city pay for the difference. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's, you can have arguments on both sides of the issue on who should pay for it, who's benefiting, and should the folks up on the hill pay for parking for downtown? The business people. The business, yeah, well, cause, sure. Because they already have to provide. Or parking taxpayers, the ones yeah. that, uh, that live on the, and again, 4.2 million, we haven't bitten a 4.2 million dollar or higher. Uh, and if you look at one of the, one of the studies calls for and I'm not advocating this position, but you can read it, that the parking, uh, the fire station would be moved. So if you want to say we've got to relocate a uh, parking public safety, yeah. public safety building, now we're talking about maybe another four and a half to mm -hmm. five million dollars. So now we're up to a $10 million, nine and a half million dollar project. A lot of stuff to consider. And then do we, do we leave something downtown? I think, Tom, we talked about the old city garage over there, whether we could leave some of our equipment downtown so we don't leave this area and I don't want to use the word unprotected because that's not it would be protected but so if which is why I think it should stay in committee because I think otherwise we should come back to council with like three options or something okay. but the timeline is good yeah I think I think that is does everybody think that's kind of is it doable that we can get something we're gonna have to really and then of course I think we want to have the downtown folks involved at some point too. We need Absolutely. to get input from those folks. And you probably, if we're ta if looking at the referendum, if you're looking at November, early August, you're going to want to have because there's a what, what's even longer than that now. It's nine weeks now instead of seven or I ten. Don't I'll check on that, Mary, and let you know what. Would be for November, rec November, right? But there's there's a longer. The lead time. It used to be it's six August, weeks, and I think August, it's, isn't it? I think it's ten weeks now. It used to be six weeks that you right. have to. So I'll check on that date so you know what that date it's is. Probably August, yeah. Okay. So a best best case scenario, maybe next year. <laughs> well, okay. no, I mean when you start, uh, yeah, at least August is. When yeah, we figure. have to budget for it. Well, so if it, I mean, if, yep. if it's not next year, it'll be 2016. But we have to try to get ahead of it now for exactly. Yeah. Well, what we want to so do. Why don't we make it a goal to bring it to the July 7th? Yeah, I would agree. It's, it's not even May yet. I know. Yeah, it's still April. <laughs> we can okay. do it. All right. I'm aggressive like that. Okay. Well, there's more than just this parking study. And then we, uh, Karen, we can get uh, Mr. Uh, Scott out here, can't we? Yeah. Scott can come out and give us a. There's one more meeting. Yep. I mean, if we can't um, get it ready by then, we can at least come back with what we have. <clears throat> so would you, would you prefer that he comes and talk? I think it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to have this on next council agenda and have him come and speak to the entire council about sure. the report. Would that be that would okay? Be yeah. yeah, I think that's good. Y can I say something? Sure. It seems to me that at the end of the day, we're gonna have to address the fire hall issue when we're talking about these. So are you gonna include that analysis as part mm -hmm. of your deal? Sure. Okay. Absolutely. All right. You know, and if we come out and say, we really don't think we need a, uh, um, a parking ramp which could happen I still think we should talk about whether or not we should uh, centralize or put uh, another fire station or an additional fire station I mean that's a whole nother issue but I think it's something we can talk about I had a whole nother can of worms to that that maybe the public work should have it should be one facility a facility to service both oh boy I know <laughs> I got well, okay. worms inside. Well, yeah. again, we're talking about budget items for next year, and, and we're also trying to do some street stuff. So we've got a lot of stuff on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Just to interject on, yep. on the parking, uh, if it doesn't do a ramp, then maybe we uh, that committee should also explore the opportunity of buying up real estate. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we have basically it's it's going to be the same thing that we I mean this is just one entity of the parking situation I think it's come down to we need to f decide where we're going to go whether it's buying real estate whether it's building the ramp we have already identified where we could possibly add additional stalls already downtown that's you know so I think that's as a whole that's what's going that's what I want to try and address, bring back to the council to address is three options A B and C involving all of that including the firehouse everything. So that would be my goal at least. Yep. 
And, and John, I, I can tell you that I visited with some folks today that don't think we have a parking issue in town and that the, they've never had a problem finding a place to park. And, and th there, there's going to be that group of folks that, sure. that, that are. Well, we have two parking um, times of the day. We have daytime parking, and then we have nights and weekends, mm -hmm. and the, they're radically different. Mm -hmm. I mean, as we yep. can test, you know, that, that's when the overflow starts to happen. And, with but potential restaurant expansion and things like that, it's all part of the equation. It's a, number, it it's a numbers problem. You know? I, think, I think the issue is, what's your definition of a fair amount of distance to walk? Is it, a, is it a half a block? Is it two blocks? Is it three blocks? And I think that's where, if you think you're going to have to be within a half a block, yep, there's probably not enough room for everybody. Well, it's, it depends on if it's summer or winter. That is true. <laughs> In the winter, winter half a block. Or rainy or not. <laughs> all right, so... <laughs> If it's okay, then we'll, we'll establish that committee with the uh, four of us, and then we'll get Denny and, and Tom and uh, Marty. And you want Scott at the next meeting? Pardon? You want Scott at yes. the next meeting? Okay. Karen, can you uh, see that? Yeah. yeah so we'll, br we'll bring it into the next, uh, we'll bring this along again for next time to go through it. Anything else on that? Thank you for your help on that. It's, uh, we, we've had this done since February, and we've kind of, with the new new council folks coming on, I thought we'd wait until we get everybody so we don't have to go through it again. All right. Um, item 10C, discuss and possible action on traffic study issue at 400 uh, block of Corn Street. Uh, is that? Uh, this was sent back to committee and it's coming back to you. Went back to public safety from the council. Now it's coming back to council. Yeah, yes. we we simplified this greatly by we're going to replicate the sign. The recommendation was to replicate the signage on the alley out here that where it meets Locust. Yes, so pedestrian crossing caution. Car, and then car, all that car crossing yeah. caution. Is that a motion? Yeah, that's the motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? We're putting up a sign, right? Just a sign. Two little signs. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, discussion, possible action on resolution 4-14, resolution releasing public drainage and utility easements, lots for Red Cedar Canyon, Cove, North Cove, Hans Hagen's home. Mr. Darnold. In December of uh, 2013, the Common Council approved releasing these easements uh, and directed the city attorney to uh, prepare documents uh, formalizing that. Uh, Catherine has, uh, has been very busy last several months but uh, uh, now her her uh, she has prepared the resolution for days 14 which formalizes the previous action by the common council um, so basically this is a housekeeping item mm -hmm. uh, but we're recommending approval of resolution 414 move yes. to suspend the rules yeah. move to suspend second uh, roll call Haggett yes Weber yes McCormick aye Morissette? Yes. Yakub? Yes. Okay, the rules are suspended. Is there a motion to approve? So move to approve resolution 4 14. Second. Is there any questions? Does anybody have any questions for Danny on it? Okay, uh, all in time. favor? Wait a second. Okay, yep. Is this, a, is this the forestry one? No. That's no, okay. This is the, uh, this is the uh, resolution uh, for public uh, drainage and utility. No, gotcha. gotcha. Okay. Okay. Just wanted if anybody has questions. Okay, now, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Discussion possible ordin on ordinance 2-14, urban forest ordinance. Uh, oh. Mr. Mayor, we've uh, brought the vice chair, Ken Holman, to do some preamble on this just to kind of give people, uh, kind of go over the intent of the ordinance and why we feel it's important for our urban forest. So. Just a point of information. Did we have first reading on this? No, no. I don't it think so. I back. think it went back to committee. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we've done, so, and it's Catherine will have some comments too here. Right. Okay. Okay. Good evening. Good Welcome. evening. Uh, council, my name is Ken Holman. I live at 1020 Fillmore Street, and I'm the vice chair of the uh, Urban Forest uh, Council Committee. And uh, the intent of this uh, work on the ordinance is to update it in preparation for dealing with um, issues of, that are presented to the city and its residents uh, by this new pest called Emerald Ash Borer. 
this ordinance was first was last updated or last created when Dutch elm disease was prevalent in the 70s. So uh, we've taken a close look and the Urban Forest uh, Committee has been um, gone over this uh, over the course of two or three meetings. And uh, we wanted to specifically address the storage of, of wood and um, <clears throat> any uh, recommend and, and make recommendations for um, avoiding uh, the transmission of oak will, which is uh, continues to be a problem, and um, and that is exacerbated by pruning during the growing season. So, along with the storage, uh, trying to recommend that uh, storage people understand the uh, dangers of transmitting uh, both pests, the emerald ash borer, and these other diseases that have been with us, and. Um, also, the practice of pruning, not pruning during the uh, growing season uh, is really the intent of the changes to the urban forest ordinance. I think also uh, one of our main concerns now that with Emerald Ash Borer being so close, I mean, what are we not 12 miles or something within 15 miles? Uh, our urban forest, just what we've inventoried, has 25% ash trees. Uh, ash trees were cheap and very popular with developers and still um, they grow fast, they're pretty hardy, and, but the problem is once th this pest comes into our community, it's very hard to uh, not only handle the problem, but it becomes a, a, a nuisance for um, a removal and uh, utilization of the wood. So some communities have spent tens of thousands of dollars trying to uh, manage that. We're ahead of the game here, and this ordinance is to help with some of that as well. Just and recommendations of new uh, planting um, kinds of trees that we recommend that you would uh, put in. And this is r r primarily in public space. Um, obviously, people in their own yards can plant whatever they want, but we're trying to provide a set of guidelines that would help you make a good choice uh, for trees. So we've, uh, we've kind of softened the language since our last go around to say more like you should do this. It's not a, it's not a you have to do it, but just to give people, and I think, uh, if you want to jump in here sure um, I just had a couple of comments um, if you look at the 229-13 <coughs> yep. E and F at the last council meeting people were concerned about the prohibiting the prohibitions on storing diseased wood and I think that's where the committee decided instead of making <coughs> it a like a violation they're trying to recommend contacting the city forester and being told what the proper way to store it is. Right. We're, we're developing some guidelines. So if you happen to have wood that has elm disease or ash borer, there's ways to prevent the things from moving around. So, so. my comment was um, that E and F really don't belong in that section. If you look on the next page, it's 229-14, E and F are this addressing the same issue of storage <coughs> and um, <coughs> trimming which the council was concerned about last time so I would just say move that new language that the committee is recommending into ENF on page 4 229-14 uh, because the previous council didn't like the um, just Flat out prohibition wanted it more. You said replace E yeah. with replace E on page four and F. Take E and yeah, F out. Get yeah, get rid of E and F Just as shown on the, page four. Put the private. underlined language on page three E and F, where it really should go, and I think the committee intended it to go. Right. We did. We kind of got mixed up in the numbers. Sorry about yeah. that. Yeah. Basically, you're getting rid of it from page three, putting, getting rid of page Correct. four, and replacing the red over to page four. Correct. Yeah. Got it. So that the same applies to both public and private trees. Well, certainly the city won't be trimming their trees. Yep. Right. Right. I mean, yep. they'll That's follow correct. their own guidelines. Yeah. So. And then I had a just a couple of other comments to make it clear that the city. Um, for example, in public nuisance tree, 229-11I, in the last line, I think it needs to be clear that it's a, one of the things that makes it a public nuisance tree is a tree that poses a threat to public safety. We're not talking about 
trees that maybe are not being maintained properly on private property and may pose a threat to you know fall on a house or something like that that's not the city's concern so I'd like public put in there and or I recommend that and then similarly on page four paragraph C um, instead of a hazard to life or property I would um, insert public safety again so that it's clear what the city's yeah. trying to protect is public safety um, in terms of caring for trees and then same comment 229-18 um, right after uh, hazard if you see in line four hazard to public safety so those were my um, comments on the ordinance Tom well you know I'm coming late to this but is my understanding that the idea of this ordinance primarily is to educate people about the um, effects of disease wood the forest would it's it's it tries to be as comprehensive in dealing with all the issues that come up in the city's attempt to manage proactively manage the tree resource and so while we don't want to be too heavy-handed and we backed off on the uh, shall and replace it with should we still feel that it's important that the city retain some control about on what trees go into the city right-of-way because they become the city's liability and responsibility. But this uh, E and F talk about what the city can do on somebody's private land. Do they not? Yes. And that's my concern is what, why is the city getting involved with somebody's private land? Well, if you look at the way DNR would come in, and if we end up with an ash, emerald ash borer, uh, they'll quarantine our whole county, and then we'll be responsible for maintaining wood that is diseased because we don't want it to continue to spread. It, it, it kind of ends up out of our jurisdiction. So we're not, we're not saying you can't store wood in your backyard. We're just saying, hey, if you're gonna do it, you should understand there's guidelines, especially if you have diseased wood. And well, same with the Oakwell thing. It's, uh, it's like, uh, it's a, some cities just flat out say, you can't do it. Why don't we think about having some language that says that the city recommends That's instead of being so heavy-handed with private property owners' rights. And in other words, E, the, the city recommends that no person firm store within the city any bark-bearing disease um, instead of no person, rec you know, instead of no, instead of should, it should be the city recommends that nobody that's fair. I don't have a problem with that at all. Well, in fact, that was our original language. We weren't sure if we would use that or, or should. So I think it's fair. I totally am fine it's with that. that. Way. Good. Yeah. I think it's appropriate as well. But if you go to violations now, let's just if I could just add that says uh, uh, violations, and that's on page four, two twenty nine dash sixteen. Any person, firm or firm or corporation violating the provisions of this ordinance shall be notified by the city forester. Da 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 da, and must be taken to and action that must be taken into compliance if the compliance persists penalties may be imposed for each day the violation is provided by the city code 1 through 18. so we are going to slap them pretty hard so i've got an oak wilt tree falls in my yard and i just i cut it up and i stack it in the, in the corner and tom comes out and says you got to move that you can't you can't store it there he won't be able to enforce that as an ordinance violation if the ordinance right. says it's recommended it's recommended um, you're not going to be able to write a citation to enforce that so why, so why do we, do we have, have that in well it? you could have it in a policy I think they're trying to well no I'm, educate I'm just trying people. to yes yeah. but they it, it that was my question well, how would you enforce you don't enforce you we've had people that have just started cutting trees down in public space that we've yeah. seen recently that's not, that's a problem yeah it is <laughs> um, Tom has an example if he wants to share that one or not but um, 
you just show up and the tree's gone, well, that's in public right away. So can we enforce a violation on that? I would think discretion I think yes. public Different. property. Yes. Yes. yes, on that no. We're not talking about private property here. Public property. If you have somebody that cuts a tree down on city property. Yeah, this violation is for public property violations. That's the way I read it. If you want to say public Which property. Which one are you trying to say that, now. yeah. The other ones, are, since we're only recommending the other things, there's no enforcement on the your oak wilt wood. We would just say, well, you know, well, it's no, up to you, but you could be spreading oak wilt, so. I know. Like, but it says private private property and tree vegetation regu regulations. And then it continues on, and then it goes to section. Well, know, I'm just reading. Well, for example, 229-14A. The reason that is, that's a tree that's interfering with uh, light from a street light or sure. visibility or traffic control. So that is enforceable. That's a matter of public safety. Correct. Even though the tree is on private property, it's encroaching into public area. I think we, we're so we're moving yeah. in the right. We're close here. So shouldn't it be? Shouldn't if if, if what the mayor is saying, shouldn't 229-16 actually maybe go under 229-13 and make it G? Huh? Well, I mean, why? I think if, if we want to start rewriting and reorganizing, we should do a first well, reading. Well, yeah, I know, I know. But I'm uh, going to make a motion for a first reading, but was su uh, the suggestion would be if, because it doesn't say, either that or we have to say public property in the violation no because there's violations under 229-14 on private property the point is a recommendation under 229-14 if it's written as a recommendation there's no violation if you don't follow it you're not there's not a requirement you're being told to comply with correct you're being asked yes. to yeah. comply with it but but you don't have to you aren't going to be written a citation i understand that but, but if it's you not have... clear uh -uh. that but this is public pro a public property violation there can be a private property there violation if you have a tree that's blocking the visibility of uh, we've seen it on ninth Stop street signs. you yes. know you can't see you know control traffic control street light all that that's that's a violation you have to come into compliance sure even yeah. though that's so on your violations that are in more sections than just 229-13 and there's other ordinances that talk about that okay. obstruction so okay well i'll move for a first reading i'll second no discussion anything that uh all right I think you know 229.14, the private property tree and vegetation regulations, reads pretty stiff. I mean, there's not there's no room for recommendation in there. I don't see the word at all. It says it will be notified. You know, it's we're moving the one. Yeah, we're changing that language. In 14, the whole thing. Uh, B. E and F from 13 are moving to 14. In 13, but how about 14 is what Jim was talking about. Right. E and F from 13 are be moved to 14, and the re it's going to say recommend instead of we shall. recommend that yeah. no but person. Right. I think Jim are you saying you have a problem with A, B, or C? Yeah, look, you know, at B is, is pretty stiff. You know, <clears throat> read all, almost all those have some pretty stiff wording in there that, <clears throat> and then E and F come in and kind of go soft. And it's, not, it's not congruent. Just so we're, just so we're clear, it's going to be the city recommends for right. both of those mm -hmm. E and F. That's right. Okay. right. And they've moved from 13 to 14. In, in the case of B, if you have a tree that has emerald ash borer on your property, we want to be able we're going to come and take it. Or you have to, because it, it, it could ruin or damage tons or many, many, many trees. Right. Yeah. Okay. So we so are. We are. We want to enforce that. And so, kind of like with the Dutch Elm thing, we're just saying, hey, if. Some people might not know it. Maybe they don't want to cut the tree down, but we're saying as a part of enforcement and probably um, quarantine that we're going to need to be able to do that. So, and it's enforceable. And you're not going to allow the, the, the property owner to keep the wood if it's infested. I believe you can burn ash. You, you can. The, the problem becomes a matter of transporting it into uninfested areas. And so what John mentioned about the state and the U.S. Uh, Department of Agriculture quarantining St. Count, Croix County, uh, they come in and help us monitor. But um, the movement of wood is, 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 and the recommendation is really that it not be moved while the emerald ash borer adult can fly 
fly away, you know, fly out of the woods. So it's again another example of some public education that the Urban Forestry Board is going to be challenged with, and so that we can, you know. What I don't want to stifle though is the uh, the opportunity for a homeowner to burn their own wood from their own tree that just right. got. That's right. Provided you guys are going to provide a guideline within this right. ordinance. That's right. To store it. Absolutely. Yep. We're working on that. That's one of our next action items to create the uh, to write the guidelines for storage so that everyone just knows how to do it. Because as Tom pointed out about trimming the trees and after May first, April first, shouldn't do that. Right. With oak trees. Oh. With oak trees. Right? Yeah, oak will can yeah. kill a lot of oak trees pretty fast. Yep. Unfortunately. And you can learn that at our Arbor Day celebration. On That's the right, 20th. this Saturday. On Saturday, but we, <laughs> so, we, we got that later on. But <laughs> Okay, so we have a f uh, motion for the first reading, right? So basically, those changes would be made and come back. And we Is there can any other changes? Yeah. yeah. If there's any other, yes. So if you have changes now. Or concerns that you have about any part of this. Will you have the guidelines? included with this or is that going to be yeah we have uh several things on the website that are part of um the advance our advanced tree wood burning whether that would be a ready yeah the, the how to store it i whatever is this tied to this ordinance i want to see the documentation okay sure yeah we'll get to work on that thank you nope. uh you guys for doing the uh this is not it's not an easy deal. No, it's pretty kind of <laughs> Every time painful. we look at it, we got to go, oh, let's, let's go backwards. And let's I, I think these guys have worked hard. You guys have had great input. I, I think it's really going to help us do a really good job managing our forest. So. And the next item, obviously, will also be postponed because they're tied together. You know. Make yep. one, one more comment. Yep. One, of the, one of the things that happens when a private party has a tree taken down, they usually remove and frequently remove all the wood as part of the process because I can't burn wood anymore. So if I have a tree taken down, they're going to haul it away. How does how do they come 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 uh, into compliance with this? Well, St. Croix Tree Service, for yeah, example, right. yeah. is there? It is uh, another matter of um, the tree services, and they're well aware of the regulations that are imposed once a insect like emerald ash borer is found. So they're not going to be the ones that move a pest like that around, and so they will comply just out of a good sense of good business to uh, not moving that and exacerbating the problem. I mean, it, it, it's a matter, that's why we're softening this. We don't have the people to, to monitor and enforce that, so, a stricter ordinance. So. so if it can't be moved and he lives in an area where he can't burn it, where does it go? It's going to go somewhere here in St. Croix County. It would have to. I have to keep it here. Once the quarantine would be going to effect, we wouldn't be able to take it out of the county. So we'll have to have... You know how we had the place up at um, yeah. The, yeah. It's gonna we're gonna need something like that to utilize it. We could chip it. You could what is it? The one inch right, uh, one inch and two dimensions um, renders it uh, un, unable to um, harbor the uh, emerald ash borer. But the the whole point is, it's, you know, we need to be prepared to handle a large amount of debris like the storm created in the site up by the industrial park. But hopefully, all, all our preventative measures and education ahead of time will spread not only the cost but the work uh, and the volume of, of infested wood that we're going to have to handle. So uh, the city will have a site that people can bring the wood to have it processed and typically you get a, a supply of wood and uh, one of the tree services that has a large tub grinder that can uh, chip it to this uh, particular size comes in with the equipment and chips it up. So, so if you chip it, is it usable? Yes. Yes. So the city could chip it and give it back yes, to that's residents. Much. That's correct. We could. So there can, you go. So Ken, do you think it's inevitable that we're going to get it? It's just a matter of time. I'll tell you, I, I bring good news, and I work for DNR Next Door in Minnesota, what, yeah. and that um, not only the uh, early detection. Many of the people here have taken the uh, first detector training over in Minnesota, and Wisconsin is developing the same program, um, but with the uh, uh, biocontrol agents, the little wasps that are not that are stingless, a uh, whole variety of things. We're going to be instituting um, uh, keep those uh, the habitat for woodpeckers going there. Don't don't uh, take those snags down because they uh, uh, point us to those larvae and under the bark and um, the early detection, the uh, changing, the mixing up of the tree canopy, the different species of trees. 
Uh, the gravel bed, if you come to Arbor Day, the gravel bed system is going to make reforestation. Uh, it's going to cut the price in half, and we're going to have uh, be well ahead of the game and prepared. So to answer your question, Mayor, I, I'm very optimistic that we will be well ahead of the game. I'd like to I'd like to see the option be looked at if if we're in cases like like gyms that the city would be able to chip it and offer it as a service to residents to have or use it themselves in their parks or what have you. We have as part of the our tree board charter now utilization which is either chipping or burning or there's people that mill it um, that it, it's part of our plan to try to facilitate some of that coming down the pike already but having the support of the obviously the, the city to have a place to do it is kind of and I don't know if that is not city property that belongs to the industrial uh, uh, think our business right. park. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm business talking about the, what is what's up in North Hudson what is that facility well, the old uh, landfill. yeah the old landfill there's a ton of yeah so we, we could utilize space like that and as part of our program for um, ed not only education, but we could start treating our trees against emerald ash borer, which we have a small budget for that to do the, the prominent trees downtown, but private citizens could uh, do that as well. And if you come to Arbor Day, you could learn more about that. <laughs> which happens to be when? Yeah. Saturday. Saturday at 9. Saturday, Saturday at, at 9, 9, 9 to at noon. The West Garage? Yeah, West Garage. Okay, we have a motion. <laughs> Thank you, Ken. We have a motion on the floor in a second for first reading. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> so 10 we're going to wait on, correct? 10 half, yes. 10 half. Uh, NG, discussion and possible action on bids received for 2014 street maintenance seal coating. At the last meeting, you had asked, you postponed action until we received some type of, you know, a letter or something, a new letter guaranteeing that they were going to take care of the issues on Laurel. Tom's been working with them, but he has not received that letter yet. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Tom. They were going to, they wanted to come out and they being the people above our contact wanted to come out and look at it. Is that correct, Tom? <laughs> well, again, the reason I, it was supposed to come off and I put it back on the agenda because I don't want to stop our, I mean, uh, we never had a vote on it. I think it was a- It, it was postponed. It was postponed and, and I just don't want to get behind the eight ball um, uh, on our street maintenance. Uh, again, we get, if we delay until a certain time, you know, if we're uncomfortable with the company, uh, the letter that they had uh, was pretty specific that they're gonna fix the problem. And we've had them do work for us since that time, haven't we, yep. Arner? Yes. And they, have you had any problems with them? Uh, no. Since, since that one project that we did, but we have had other projects with street sealing that they've they've done for us that they there has crack filling and yes. pa patching last year yes yeah so i guess my point to the council is remember we always talk about we never get stuff done on a timely mm -hmm. banner well if we delay it again we may i don't know when we're going to get on the schedule but tom go ahead i just Did everyone I wanted see everybody the last letter or the letter that i received i believe uh, last i forwarded year. that to the council looking at it right okay. now so we did um, have this letter on file. Uh, they did agree that uh, the project would be completed no later than July 15th. After uh, the last council meeting, I did contact uh, John Mason, who's <clears throat> basically my contact or the farmer's uh, contact to the city and uh, discussed uh, the issues that we had at the last meeting, stating that uh, we would like a, maybe an, uh, uh, another letter or agreement that would specify the area a little closer, the exact um, procedure that they're gonna follow. And if this uh, process was not completed by, uh, in a timely fashion, that it would be deducted, deducted and the uh, approximate cost for the repairs would be deducted from the 2014 seal code agreement. Um, uh, he's, John Farner, or John Mason said at that time that he would uh, speak with his superiors and I was contacted last Thursday afternoon that they would actually like to come in and revisit uh, um, the area before they had signed a, uh, send a letter out like that. But I think- So what were, do you think that means, Tom? They don't wanna do it or- they No, they would to... like to just revisit it with, 
but they said in this letter here that they would um, they would get it taken care of. So, so we had two bids, if I remember right. And yes, does anybody remember what they were? Yep, I've got it up here from last meeting. The Farner was with the alternate was one sixty eight four ninety one. Scott's construction was two sixty four two ninety nine. I'll make a motion to to move forward with Farner. Uh, um, base. Can we do that if it's not on the agenda? Didn't you? Isn't it on the agenda? It's on the agenda. The documentation was possible wasn't action. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll I'm make sorry. a motion to move forward with Farner and uh, just have Tom continue to follow up with the okay. process of them evaluating Laurel. Sure. Is there a second to that? Second. Discussion now. Um, I don't know. I, I just I just don't want to get put on the back burner again, and we don't. Go ahead. My suggestion was, I knew we had this letter. I didn't know it at the last council meeting. I didn't either. And I wondered why it was put out that long, but I think it was a function of weather. But I thought it would be better than, that you asked for an enforceable agreement. Yep. So I suggested that let's have them agree in writing that get estimates on the amount and if it's not done by that deadline which is the deadline they said they could complete it by the city would withhold that amount from their 2014 contract i thought it just puts a little bit more look here's and the city could use that to complete the project and i it's think we just could still I do thought that. the council wanted something more than just their promise you know their letter that's saying they would do that. <clears throat> How much do you think that project will cost if, you, if we had to go out and rebid that project, the area that's affected? Probably under $10,000. So we have, a, we have two bids, one for 169 and yeah. versus two. It's almost $100,000 more. Right. right. Yes. And we're, it's not worth it to wait. It's not, in my <laughs> opinion, it's not worth it as a business decision to wait for 10000 no. I believe that, the, that if they don't do this, they are they've got a a real problem with us and we have a we have a sizable amount of money for projects uh, for projects this year for crack filling and flex patching i i think they would probably think that looking at the amount of money that we're going to do for other projects this fall that and quite uh, frankly i if they don't come out and do it i wouldn't pay them the 10 or whatever even though we have a contract on the well they sent us a letter saying they're going to fix it yep. and if they don't do it by july 30 whenever they said yeah. That I would say we're going to withhold the money and get it done. I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I, I mean, I don't know. You know. We talked about it last time, and I, I just thought, why do we want to risk a bit of saving, almost not saving, $96,000. And I'm not saying we're risking it because we have 60 days, was it, to accept the bid? Yes. But we're coming up. Uh, we've got... Uh, April, uh, the April 2nd is when they were... So we have until May, but June. June 2nd. But I'd like to get on the schedule, get it uh, done so that we don't wait till September to do it. Yeah, because it won't get done till August if we wait till the end of May. Well, I don't know. Anybody else have any thoughts on it? Randy or John or Jim? So, so you are we going to separate the two issues? Is that basically what we're going to we're going yeah, move I, ahead with this and yeah. then move ahead with the enforceable yes. contract yeah. as a separate issue? Yeah, I mean, we still I, have a letter saying think, they're going to do Yeah, think they think we'll, Put in writing that they'll do it. I just yep. wanted to have. A and I think Lori, Lori was concerned that mechanism. they had done a, a, a rotten job on that. And I think it was over in that district. Sort of street, but yep. I think it's kind of a cop out for them to say they'll come reevaluate it. They already admitted they'd redo it, but that's why I'm saying let Tom yep. continue forward. Well, this letter says they're going to do it. Yep. So. So that's why it's say to reevaluate. Re to me, is a delay game. <laughs> so I'm not going to play their delay game, and we're going to move forward and have it taken care of. Well, if they're already going to be here in town, then they can just take yep. care of it as part of another job. That's so. kind of what I was thinking. Yeah. Quite frankly, I think uh, as we look for payment, Neil, on this, if we don't have that 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 spot done, and I don't know if that's a good number or not, maybe we won't. Maybe it's 158 that we pay them instead of the 168, so we can get the other part, and then we'll. Well, how do you? Because we we hold back a contingency, don't we? Don't we do well, with respect to the project that is the subject of the contract i know that <laughs> but but you know we we write the checks <laughs> i know she doesn't like that but you know <laughs> well why don't, why don't we get an update on july whatever yeah, the first meeting july. in july and then we'll know then we can make they're going to be out here soon anyway aren't they 
I mean, they want to do business. We want to do business with them, and they want to do business with us, I think. I don't think we need to justify it. I think you're right, and I think we have, let's just get going on this. <laughs> Anybody have any other thoughts? We'll have a <laughs> vote on it if questions, comments. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, oh, I'm sorry, new business. I. I kind of uh, skipped over that. Uh, discussion and possible action on resolution 5-14, preliminary resolution, declaring intent to exercise special assessment powers under section 660703, Wisconsin statute. Um, We're I'm sorry. Go ahead. We're required to do this every year before we can actually issue any special assessments for any of the projects. Mm. So this is standard that we do every year prior to the summer road work. I'll move to suspend the rules. Roll call, or is there a second? Second. Okay, roll call. Weber? Yes. McCormick? Yes. Morissette? Yes. Yaku? Yes. Hoggett? Yes. Okay, discussion on this. Um, I think this, is our, this has been our standard agreement um, that we've had for what will happen next is then as the project is defined and the information on special assessments becomes available, the property owners will be notified there'll be a special assessment hearing at some point down the road and then the public will have the opportunity. But we have to make this declaration first. So. What's the uh, timeline? When, is, when are the bid openings, Karen? Right now it looks like the bid opening will be practically June 12th. So usually then we would the, the following council meeting then. The June 16th council meeting would be the public hearing. Right. Okay. I move to approve resolution number 5-14. Is there a second? Second. Uh, just as a comment, uh, this is one of the parts of our uh, city uh, resolution or city code, code or how enforcement or preliminary uh, Spe uh, special assessment powers, I think we need to review. Hasn't been reviewed in. Our special assessment policy. Yeah. Yes. How many years? Uh, Danny, well, do you remember? I've been here 13 and it hasn't been done since I've been here, other than adjusting the time. And I date. think Mr. Sifko is here and I think that I would be. we reviewed it when, when we had the sidewalk issue well, over on. We, ch on we changed the amount of time given to people to pay, but we haven't looked at what they pay for oh, and okay. what they don't pay for. And I think we are very, at this point, if we compare some of the other municipalities, we're very generous, but I think that's something we, this council needs to address also, whether or not we want to change that. Would you like public works to look at that? And yeah, probably. Okay. Anyway, that's kind of off the track a little bit, but um, any other discussions on this? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. I think that's all we have on uh, recommendations from the mayor. To, uh, April 25th, 9 o'clock. April 26th. 26th. Oh, geez, I get the wrong. Saturday. Saturday at the West Garage on just off 2nd Street. I, I would like to just follow up by saying uh, Arbor Day this year is going to be a lot different because we, uh, with the grant money we received from uh, Wisconsin DNR, we are building a gravel, what's called a gravel bed nursery or gravel bed system, and you plant 60 to 70 trees in a 30 by, 10 by 30 bed space and the trees the roots grow very fast and in the fall you pull them back out and we plant them around the city in places where we've lost trees or there's trees that can be planted and we continue to uh, reforest and we do it at a fraction of the cost um and success is really good isn't it? it's been fantastic and so we're one of the first cities not only in wisconsin but also minnesota that's doing it. it's one of the reasons we got the grant so it's gonna be pretty neat uh, so you can help plant with that You'll learn more about Emerald Ash Borer. We've got pruning. So from 9 to 12, it's supposed to be sunny but cool. Um, uh, I think at the West Garage, it's, it's going to be uh, one of our better Arbor Days. So come on out. It's going to be awesome. It's going to rain. No, it's not. It the forecast does. is 49 and sunny. It's going <laughs> to rain, just like the, it's not gonna rain. the carnival. And Last year was 65 That's degrees and sunny. Okay. Communication for future agenda items. Council members, anybody else? I Yes, sir. I know we had asked that have uh, stop markings up by the intersection of was the new the new street Badger and uh, Crestview. 
Karen, I believe we asked the, or Tom to have uh, stop markings by the stoplights, the new stoplights. So they're not there yet. Yeah. Uh, it's getting, there needs to be some markings put down. I'm, I'm trying. That's why the conditions of approval of the subdivision, they have to provide for that. I, I think they got into cold weather too right. late last year. But yeah, we'd like to get them out there, get that painted as soon as possible. Yeah, and then just an overall uh, look at our painting stripes in the city. Some of them are really worn. Okay. Or have public works do it. And we need to dig for a special meeting too, if we can. Oh, that's right. I have one other thing: a special meeting for the booster or for the uh, softball association, uh, April twenty. After April twenty fourth. After can... April twenty fourth, but April twenty fifth, we did couldn't get a. Was there anyone here that can make that meeting, the twenty fifth? I, I know Mary couldn't. I can make it. I can. Two. Is it Tom? It was. I have no idea. Okay. Uh, is it something that we're even looking at if the contract does not? Well, I think I think. Uh, yeah, I think it is. I, you it, could approve it and not issue it until you get okay. yep. um, the receipts you're asking yep. okay. for from 2013. What time? 8.30 um, worked for two people, but even if it works for him, we still don't have a fourth because Jim, you can't make Jim it. and Mary can't make okay. it. Okay, the, ne can't make the it. next week. I can only do Monday. Which morning. would be? Monday morning. 28th. How about the 28th? Uh, does that work for anybody? Whoa, hold on. Yeah. Uh, 8.30, we have a... That's, that's okay. It'll last what five time minutes. It'll, it'll take five, five minutes. minutes. Okay. Uh, 8.30 on the 28th? Yep. Yes. One, two, three, four. And this would be at... Uh, right here. At what time again? 8.30. 8.30 p.m. A.m. A.m. No, no, not 8.30 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> that's my bedtime. Yep. <laughs> Does that work for everyone? We have four. No, nope, right. Mr. Weber, but we got four. We have four. And, Rich. and Rich may, no, Rich won't be back. Okay. So you'll have four. Okay. 8.30 on, the, on April 28th? Yes. Okay. All right. We'll get the notice out tomorrow. City attorney? Nope. City staff, Mr. Nope. Devin? Okay. At this point, we'd like to uh, adjourn into closed session to talk about uh, compensation and benefits for the fire chief and fire inspector. So moved. Second. We have to roll call vote yet? Yes, please. Roll Yacoub? call. Yes. McCormick? Yes. Hoggett? Yes. Weber? Yes. Morissette? Yes. We're in we're into closed session. Mm -hmm.